The last thing we have to talk about with a circle is a tangent line. So we talked about this on the first day. We defined it. A tangent to a circle, a line, segment, or ray in the plane of the circle that intersects the circle. in exactly one point. The point of tangency is the point where a circle and a tangent intersect. So the theorem, we got a few theorems that go along with tangent lines. So the first theorem, if a line is tangent to a circle, then the line is perpendicular to the radius drawn to the point of tangency. So we've got line AB is our tangent line, and that's going to be perpendicular to the radius. So we can draw a right angle in there on either side. So that's going to help us because we're going to have pictures like this. ED is tangent to circle O. Find the value of X. So if it's tangent, we can draw the right angle with the radius. And then how does that help us find X? What equals 90? Good. X plus 38 equals 90. So X equals how much? 52. Okay. That one's a basic one. We have a belt. Hot. Um, my hands are so cold right now. All right. A belt fits tightly around two circular pulleys as shown below. Find the distance between the centers of the two pulleys. So looking here, listen, from one center to the other center is what we are trying to find. So that's going to be X. I want you to talk to somebody next to you and figure out what we could possibly do to help us break this down to find X. Talk to someone. Okay. So, did anybody figure out a possibility for us to break this down? Yes, please. I see a possibility, but what are the numbers going to be in the angle? Okay. So, this right here is 90? Yeah. I agree. This one's also 90. I agree. That's a good first step. You lost it. Okay. So, you got to get a little creative. From here, directly across, we can split this into a rectangle and a right triangle. So, if you break down the shape, you can split it into two shapes. Because of those 90 degrees that you guys identified first, we can create a rectangle. And then if you have a rectangle, the other side is going to be a right triangle. So the 35 on here is going to be 35 on here on the right triangle. So the 35 is one of the legs of the right triangle. And then if this radius is 8 and this radius is 14, that means this is 8 and this is so we have two legs of a right triangle, and we are finding the hypotenuse of the right triangle. Okay? So a squared, 6 squared, plus b squared, 35 squared, equals hypotenuse squared, so x squared. So we're splitting it to a rectangle and a triangle. All right, 6 squared is? 36. 35 squared. 1,225. Okay. And add those. What do you get? 261. And then what do we need to do? So x 
So is that perfect or is that an approximation? Approximately 35 point what? 5 1 and then our units are in inches. So the distance we found was 35.51 inches. All right, so let's go over. Okay, next theorem. We are recording it. Next theorem. If a line in the plane of a circle is perpendicular to the radius at its intersection on the circle, then the line is a tangent. So what is this? It's the reverse of the theorem we just learned, okay? So this is the converse of it. So if we have a marking of perpendicular from the radius to the line outside, then we know that that line outside is a tangent line. Any questions there? All right. So number three, if we want to prove that M or LM is tangent, what do you think we should do with that triangle? Prove it's a right triangle, right? How do we prove it's a right triangle? Yeah, so we have to check 25 squared equal, question mark, to 7 squared plus 24 squared. So if we can prove this is a right triangle, we've got a 90 degree perpendicular. So 25 squared is 625. 7 squared, 24 squared, 570 what? Okay. 49 plus 576? So did we prove this was the right triangle? Yes. yes. So whenever we explain, we say, therefore, um, the sides of triangle prove a right triangle so therefore or so I already did it therefore um, ML is perpendicular to NL Without a picture, we can do the same thing. So if NL equals 4, LM equals 7, and NM equals 8, we want to figure out if ML is tangent. So without the picture, we have to remember which one of these is our hypotenuse. Eight. Eight. And why is 8 the hypotenuse? It's always the biggest number. So 4 squared is? 7 squared, 8 squared, 16 plus 49, 65, is that equal to 64? No. no. So do we have a tangent? No. no. So therefore, the side lengths do not create a right triangle. Any questions on the reverse of the theorem? All right, next theorem. 
the measure of an angle formed by a tangent and a chord is half the measure of the intercepted arc. Okay, so what it's saying here is this tangent and this chord create an angle. Okay, that angle is angle C. That angle is going to be one half of the arc that it encloses. So arc C B. So if that arc is 40, then the angle is 20 degrees. So let's try it. RS and TU are diameters of circle A. RB, line RB is tangent to circle A at point R. Find the measure of B, angle BRT. So we're looking at BRT. So in order to find that angle, we need its arc, RC, correct? Okay, so we know the measure of angle B, R, C equals half of the measure of arc, R, T. So we need to find R, T. How do you think we could do that? Keep going, Addy. So what's 180 minus 126? Fifty-four. So this angle here, what are these two angles called again? If they're next to each other and create 180? Supplementary, but what's their proper name? Linear pair. Okay. So R-A-T, that angle, is 54. How does that help us? It's not doubled. Is it a central angle or an inscribed? Central. So if it's a central angle, it's congruent to its arc. A central angle is congruent to its arc. Alright, so now we know the central or the arc length. So measure of angle BRT equals one half of 54. So how much does that equal? 27 degrees. All right, now we need to find the measure of angle TRS. So TRS is right here. How would we possibly know that? Aiden. Yes, good. A tangent line to the radius is a right angle. How is that going to help us? 90 minus 27. So we can take the knowledge of our last theorem. We have a right angle with a tangent and a radius. So we can do 90 minus the 27 and get 63 degrees. Very good. Yes. What do you mean? Oh, so you worked backwards, so you knew you knew vertical here. 
So you knew this was 126? Is that what you're saying? And you did the TRS first as an inscribed angle? Okay, that's fine. You just worked a different way. You got the same answer? Very good. Any other questions on that one? Okay, last problem here. So we're going to merge the last set of notes with the equation of a circle and then a tangent line. So this question gives you a circle. It says draw a tangent line to the circle whose equation is x minus 2 squared plus y squared equals 20 at the point 0, 4. So we want a tangent line with that as one of its points. And after we draw that tangent line, we also want to write its equation. So let's brainstorm here. What do you think could help us? An h and a k? Good. What's our h and k? 2, 0. So we can start by finding the center. That helps us start. What else do you think would help us? Huh? Uh, no, radius is actually is not going to help us. What do we know about the tangent line in a circle and its radius from, or from the center to that point? Yeah. What else do we know about the tangent line and a radius? The right angle. So what if we drew from here to here, so there's a radius, we know this tangent line has to create a right angle, correct? So what does that mean about the tangent line and that radius, if they have to be right angles? Yeah. Very good. The definition was perpendicular. How does that help us, Aiden? Slope. Very good. That's what I was looking for is slope. So the slope of the radius is how much? What's the slope of that radius? Negative 2. And we know the tangent is perpendicular. So what's the perpendicular slope? So is one half. So can we start at that point of tangency and do a slope of one half to make our line? There we go. So there's my line. We created a perpendicular tangent line to the radius. So we've drawn it. We've done the first half of the problem. The second half says write the equation for this tangent line. Ochenta? Uh, Very good. One half x plus four. We already found the slope, and the problem gave us the y-intercept. Any questions? All right, wonderful.